Libra Sun and Rising, welcome to your April 2022 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So what we have going on in April is the Aries energy in the house that you rule, which is the seventh house. Aries is your opposite sign, so it's in the opposite house. And on the very first day of the month, we have a new moon here at 11 degrees of Aries. And so there could be some new developments if you are involved with someone that um, perhaps it's about commitment, perhaps it's about divorce. I mean, it could really run the gamut. And it's also, it could be something that has to do with seeing your relationship in a new way. Because you are going to have a full moon in your sign, Libra, on the 16th of the month. And whenever there's a full moon, the sun is opposing it in the opposite sign in the opposite house. So there again is that Aries energy. And in the case of that full moon, which is mid-month, I could see some Libra people realizing that they need to focus on themselves in order to make a relationship healthy. And this can be a theme of the month where the new moon points the new way that you can't do things the old way. When you have a full moon in your sign, it's time to let go of certain aspects that have worn out their welcome. And this is the first house of the self. So it's like um, becoming aware of Maybe it's um, patterns or behaviors that have become a pattern that you want to change. And um, this allows you to see what they are and be able to adjust that. Your ruler Venus is in a fellow air sign, Aquarius, until the fifth of the month. So if you're listening in March, this is already underway. And for you, Aquarius is the fifth house of romance. Um, and so Venus here can be very romantic. And this is another reason why this new moon on the first can be connected to the activity of Venus and Mars, which have moved into that fifth house in the month, in the month of March. And, um, Sometimes this can be like meeting somebody new, having an affair. Um, and, you know, <laughs> because I've had people say this to me in the past, I'm not being cavalier about affairs. I'm just saying that that could be what's going on, you know. And a committed relationship might be on its last legs and you meet somebody and maybe there's a flirtation. Maybe you're not actually having an affair, but you see based on the way that that new person is relating to you, that people can interact with you in ways that you're not um, experiencing with your significant other. And even with these whether it's an emotional affair or a, um, a mirror flirtation or something like that, you can still uh, get that kind of information that makes you reflect upon your relationship and say, wow, you know, I would really love to have that kind of thing on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that I can have that, you know, to really believe that that's possible for you. So, um, and, but I do think that for some of you, there may be this physical stuff happening too, because, uh, <laughs> because Mars is the libido and the fifth house is recreational sex. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm not saying that it has to be, but I'm just, it is what it is. Let's put it that way. So, um, and it's spring in the Northern hemisphere. So the hormones might be flying. So um, in any case, um, on the 5th of April, Venus goes into Pisces. So it becomes more business-like. Um, another thing about Venus in the 5th house is that it's just the house of pleasure in general. So 
you know, anything that you are doing where you're just indulging in things that, that are very, um, luxurious and artistic because Venus can be about love and beauty, romantic, artistic, creative, that might be what is going on. But then on the fifth, you have Venus going into this very, um, productive, earthy area of your work life and your, um, your health. And, uh, but this can add harmony and money to that area too. So, I mean, um, wherever Venus travels, it can, it can, uh, indicate money. So in the sixth house, it can be money through maybe a raise or maybe your office is getting spruced up and getting some kind of renovation, uh, paint job or something like that. You get along with coworkers when Venus goes into the sixth house, it could be love in the workplace. Mars goes into the sixth house on the 14th of the month. Mars in the sixth house can be more combative. It could be fighting with coworkers. It could be, um, you know, having some kind of com competitive thing with coworkers. But because you have to look at, you know, exactly what the transits are, you have Neptune there, you have Venus there, so it might soften that a bit. Um, but it might be, I wonder if some of you are having an interlude where uh, in March and into April, you're having this little time off maybe where you're doing fun stuff and then you go back to work, like a spring break or something like that. On the 16th, that full moon is happening that I told you about at 26 degrees of Libra. On the 19th, the sun goes into Taurus. And this is the other side of Aries, so it's the 8th house. 8th uh, house activity is going to be more internalized because this is a water house. This is Scorpio's domain, and it's very... Um, it's kind of secretive and it is about shadow work. It's about, uh, you know, mystical things, but kind of like the occult, um, astrology is connected to this house. And so is the tarot and, you know, um, connecting with the dead through mediumship and things like that. And, um, personal alchemy, shamanism, things that you do to make your, um, make yourself over again. So that's going to be a theme. On the 29th, Mercury goes into Gemini. Um, this is a fellow air sign in the opposite direction. So this is in the ninth house. Um, are you planning to travel Libra and you're getting your passport together you're getting paperwork together are you entering college or are you going to be teaching at the university ninth house can be higher education some kind of maybe you're enrolling in some kind of yoga teacher training or something like that are you publishing something on the same day neptune goes retrograde so this is in that sixth house again. This can be a reality check. Neptune in the sixth for Libra can be doing work of a spiritual nature even. And yet sometimes it can be disillusioning when Neptune goes retrograde because you may have these fantasies or this idealism about whatever it is that your plans are and then something maybe hits a snag. If Mars is in that house, perhaps there is some uh, situation that's happening where you thought you had the ideal um, office place and you just realize it's not what you thought it was. And by the way, um, I saw some sign 
today and they said, as, or, you know, an article and they said, as people are getting back into the workplace. And I thought, is it really now that everybody's getting back into the workplace? I mean, hasn't that been already happening? But I guess it might be happening en masse. So maybe um, that's something that is where you're going back into your uh, workplace and it's you can't enter the same river twice. Um, things have changed and you feel like disillusioned about it, perhaps. It's all good, you know. It, it doesn't matter if things have changed. You're going to be able to um, change with them in one way or the other. And this can also involve the service that you provide to others altogether. You may be like, well, I'm not sure anymore. I thought that was what I wanted to do, but I'm not sure. That's okay. You're going to find what you need to find. And um, then the very next day, we have a solar eclipse at 10 degrees of Taurus in that eighth house. The phoenix rising from the ashes. And rising from the ashes of ashes of that full moon in your sign. So um, new beginnings about transforming yourself. Maybe you feel some type of uh, esoteric practice like shamanism calling to you. And you're going to heed the call. Um, this is going to continue to be a theme throughout this year. So embrace the change. Embrace the transformation. Okay, Libra, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading and you're especially interested in astrology, um, if you've never had your chart analyzed, I would love to do it. And I have a double reading called my deep dive reading. Uh, this is for all you Libras, Libra sun signs with, um, you know, Mercury in, in, uh, in Scorpio or Venus and Mars. Well, I mean, I'm half joking. Even if you're, uh, listening to this for your rising sign in Libra, you could have Scorpio, you could have Scorpio as your sun sign, your moon sign as well. But the point is that I'm, uh, it's an extended reading and it's an hour of natal chart analysis with an hour of transits for the upcoming 12 months. And it's at a special price because I offer these two types of readings separately. But, you know, you save probably at least $25 if you get them together. But um, in any case, I have that one. I have other types of readings. You can find out more information at rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below. Take care. Bye.